I didn't realize, I think, until I started really working on Chain 2 and started studying it, what a great composer Wojciechowski is. I mean, you can tell, of course, from, from his other symphonies, but he's really, um, he's really a great composer. I mean, and I, you know, he works a lot with this idea of ad libitum, and, but to, uh, and it's, it goes back and forth between kind of a structured rhythmic movement and ad libitum. And um, I think in Chain 2, what I find fascinating is because it's, and I, I think in general, I find late compositions by composers fascinating um, because there's kind of the idea of memory. Ludoslavsky, of course, um, I think suffered a great deal in his lifetime. Um, and, you know, it's interesting because he really moved away in his middle period from this idea of folk. Uh, folk songs and this idea of, you know, Bartok and, and it was, I think at the time it was kind of imposed upon um, composers of this generation. And um, what's interesting with Chain 2 is that you see him returning in a way to that, that voicing, but on his own terms. There's recognition of of music as being a living and breathing art form and continuing to to live and breathe um, and that there's no in a sense ideal performance that it's all part of a larger kind of artistic process um, and also because there's a recognition of what happens in performance I mean even if you're playing a, a Brahms symphony or if you're playing a work by Bach every night is going to be different even with the same exact people on stage and because there's a different energy, there's a different people's experiences just from one day to the next shape them. Um, even the performance from the previous night might, might shape and inform the next night's performance. So I, I appreciate as a performer that Ludoslavsky would actually in a way write that in, into his score.